perfect. So, yes, good morning, Sitkenu, Divya. I would like to request uh, one of us to please lead in prayer. Anyone? Okay, yes, yes, it can you please go ahead? Father, we come to the throne of grace. Thank you, Lord, for the day you have given us. Thank you for this hour. We are going to spend it learning about fasting and prayer and intercession, Lord. We thank you for this day you have given us. We are as we are going to learn about Lord your word, Lord. Whatever we are going to learn, Lord, let it should be added to our knowledge and it should be used for your kingdom expansion or your glory, Lord. All glory to be given to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Sitkinu. Um, so in the last class, we uh, talked about fasting and, you know, that it can be, uh, it should be done the way God wants us to do it. And we talked about the chosen fast and saw how it was not so much about uh, the the schedule to follow, the things to eat and not to eat, but it was more about heart attitudes. It was more about uh, our relationship with God. It was more about our relationship with people, uh, being righteous, being fair, okay? And uh, uh, that God sees the, the life and uh, uh, God is more concerned about our life rather than just our activities. So, you know, that, that is uh, to help us understand that we must not become like Pharisees. You know, sometimes uh, faith, uh, faith is, uh, we make it ritualistic. You know, we make it very, uh, uh, between God and us and people, we make things very, you know, uh, uh, complicated. We make it uh, religious uh, and traditional. God is not interested in those things, but he goes for the real deal. He goes for the, the very life, the attitude and the motivation. So that is what we understood. We read from Isaiah chapter 58 and we saw how, you know, beautifully that passage uh, uh, tells us that uh, fasting is... Mm, is to be obedient to God. You know, we, we don't try to impress him and say, oh God, look what we have done and why is it that you're not listening to us? And, you know, God uh, wants us not to do it out of selfish interests, right? But we we do it in order to please him. And we God looks into our life and, you know, God uh, made so many comments about, you know, relationships uh, and preparing themselves in the right manner, their hearts, and also, we saw how there, there is a lot that talks about compassion and mercy uh, for those who don't have. So all this we have seen. Now let's go forward from there uh, and see why is it that we must fast. Okay, So we can fast for various reasons. Um, we generally, you know, fasting, we've seen, you know, you put on sackcloth, ashes. That is all symbolic of uh, denying self we deny self. So uh, in a moment of repentance or in a season of repentance, maybe we just feel like, God, you know, I want to draw closer to you. There are things in my life which are not pleasing uh, and I want to fast just to let you know that I'm surrendering, I'm confessing the wrong things uh, that I have lived with so far. So it's, it's showing our repentance, showing our uh, turning around towards God. So that is one reason why we could fast uh, and humbling uh, uh, fasting is also humbling ourselves isn't it before the presence of god so it could be a way of us saying okay god you you are god and i just yield to you i surrender to you i humble myself in your presence so we we would see uh, so we uh, people in scripture do things like this they humbled themselves by fasting and uh, they just came before god so we can humble ourselves through fasting. We can also seek God. Remember, we had that discussion where we said that if we want to hear from God, excuse me, um, uh, we, we said how fasting uh, intensifies our focus, right? Fasting strengthens our faith. So all these things will help us hear better from God. So if I am, if I want to hear from God, okay, God, what should I do or speak in this matter? Then I can fast and I can uh, pray. I can fast for deliverance. I can fast for direction. I know I can uh, fast to receive God's mercy. So many reasons to fast. And in scripture, there are beautiful examples. Uh, King Jehoshaphat, 
he had called for the people of Judah to fast during the battle in uh, 2 Chronicles 20. So when they fasted, we, we saw how God delivered them supernaturally. The enemy started fighting themselves and, you know, uh, Jehoshaphat and his people were delivered. Uh, so for deliverance, he knew that for victory and deliverance, I must fast. So he engages in fasting with the people. Nehemiah, Nehemiah was... Uh, uh, the one who heard about the walls of Jerusalem being broken, but he takes time to fast and seek God before he gets into the assignment of building the wall. So what was he seeking? He was seeking clarity of vision, clarity of thought, clarity of his call. Oh God, what is it that you want me to do? How do you want me to do this? So he fasted. He also, uh, you know, as he humbled himself, we see that he received the favor of the king, the uh, king, uh, gave him the provision that he needed to do the work that God was calling him to do. Isn't that amazing, right? That the people in the natural are supporting God's work and purpose for us uh, in our lives. And God can do that. And Nehemiah sought God and God made this possible for him. You know, Ezra, again, for uh, uh, repentance, no, he fasted for direction. He fasted. He also asked the people to fast. So he told, you know, all his people to fast and uh, they sought God's direction in that way as a community. God, what is it that you're going to do for us and how are you going to lead us? Esther, once again, Esther for deliverance of a nation. Esther fast. You know, some people call it, they fast for the nation, they fast for their region, they call it Esther fast. So she fasted. Uh, it was a difficult situation, you know, uh, maybe a difficult, uh, for her, it was a difficult political situation. There was a decree. And if that decree uh, went, uh, it, it was uh, 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 taken up, that would have meant the destruction of the Jews. But Esther had to do something. The people had to do something. But it's not so much their doing. They wanted God to do something. So what did they do? They fasted. So when we want God to do something about our nation, about the things in our nation, one of the uh, one of the ways in which we can ask God to move upon our nation is fasting. Okay, When we fast, God brings that deliverance. And the situation, in the case of Esther, it was turned around supernaturally. So situations can turn around supernaturally when we fast. Daniel. Daniel was a man given to a lot of prayer, a lot of fasting. And what a beautiful example he is for us. You know, for me, I feel like Jesus was a wonderful example. But if you ask me, uh, pick anyone else, I would be really inspired by the devotion and the commitment of Daniel's life uh, also. Uh, Daniel, you know, he prayed uh, so regularly. He was given to prayer. He was also given to fasting. Now, when there was a, uh, a an interpretation that he had to make, or, or, or rather, in fact, uh, the king never even revealed his dream to Daniel. But he told him, you know, you need to interpret it. Daniel went, prayed, he got the dream, he got the interpretation, he got the understanding and he uh, came back with words of wisdom. So he knew that if he could pray, if he could fast, he can receive understanding from God. So there are instances in the book of Daniel where Daniel is praying to uh, get clarity, praying for wisdom and understanding. So when I want wisdom and understanding uh, in, in, in what I'm doing, I can fast. And that will help me. Now, Daniel also fasted uh, when he wanted to see a prophetic word fulfilled. Okay, so we can do that when we want to see a, a prophetic word fulfilled. This is in Daniel chapter nine. He fasted and prayed, so we can do that. The Lord Jesus, you know, of all people, we we could say that he ha he probably has it uh, so great. You know, things on a silver platter. He's fully God and fully man. But we saw his prayer life, how he was given to prayer. Now we are observing his his uh, uh, discipline of fasting. 40 days, the Lord Jesus, we are told, he fasted before his public ministry could even start off. So uh, Jesus gave importance to fasting. Okay, uh, and uh, that must encourage us. Now, there are a lot of people before they get into public ministry, they fast, they go into 
you know whatever like a, a seven day 21 day 14 day 40 days and then only they they start their public ministry you know well and good if god has called them to do something like that so uh, we can fast before we uh, get into ministry uh, and any form of ministry for that reason okay even if uh, uh, we we need to uh, fast before we preach or something so for the longest time i used to do that before i preach sermons uh, i would you know skip a meal the previous uh, few generally it was a saturday i would do that and then only i would go preach so i did it for a long time till a time when uh, i was asked to share in a in a women's conference and uh, i was given long hours the entire day i had to speak and uh, that's when i realized that i couldn't like physically i couldn't uh, manage because the whole day you know after you're fasted and then you have to also have the energy to minister the whole day so uh, i i i wouldn't say i stopped doing it but i do it less often now uh, or maybe i i uh, you know i i like i i prefer to do it before uh, the actual uh, event because i realized that you know uh, to uh, to do it every time before i speak uh, uh, that was that was not uh, uh, you know something that was practical later on for me so then i decided to do it you know i'll i'll share with you about my personal thing later so uh, you can also point i'm making is you can uh, you can fast uh, and then you know take on public ministry Uh, at the very beginning of your public ministry or every time you minister uh, you can set aside time to pray especially for that ministry time and fast we see jesus doing that so that's a wonderful thing okay then elders at the church of antioch we saw that they were ministering to god and the holy spirit spoke to them so uh, uh, seeking direction again as a team as a ministry team uh, but over here it is more like they were just ministering fasting and praying and holy spirit decided okay i will give you direction so sometimes that happens you know you can also just fast and pray to just be with god it's not always about i want you i want god to show me this show me that give me this give me that no but i just want to renew my relationship with god i want it to be strengthened i want to seek his presence just be with god so i'm fasting that's what the the elders in antioch were doing they were ministering to god and the holy spirit gave them direction okay uh moving on uh paul and barnabas appointed elders in the church for that before they did that they fasted so these are all uh reasons why we can fast we can again we have mentioned this we can fast for ourselves or we can fast for others we can fast for a nation a city a group of people our uh, church family anybody else also so uh, fasting would work in all these ways now we are going to move on to uh, the blessings of the chosen fast uh, if there are any thoughts any questions uh, just feel free you know we are trying to understand fasting okay and you should be able to apply it in your in your walk with the lord and that's the whole point so if you have any uh, questions or you know just want to clarify how does this work how does that work it's good to ask and uh, uh, you know get those things clarified so feel free you just post it on the chat here or unmute yourself and ask but i'm going to proceed okay i'm moving on to the next section which is about the blessings of the chosen fast so now we've understood you know, god is more concerned about our attitude he's more concerned about our relationship with him that we have righteous intentions and then when we fast that becomes a chosen fast okay so let's quickly read uh, isaiah 58 verses 8 through 14 okay one round let's quickly read that and then i'll come and uh, explain it to us So Isaiah fifty eight eight to fourteen. Isaiah fifty eight verses eight to fourteen. Yeah. Then your light will break forth like dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be rear guard. Then you will call. and the lord will answer you will cry for help and he will say here i am if you do away with the yoke of oppression with the pointing finger and malicious talk 
and if you spend yourself in behalf of the hunger and satisfy the needs of the oppressed then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the noonday the lord will guide you always he will satisfy your needs in sun scorched land and will strengthen your frame you will be like a well watered garden like a spring whose water never fails your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up to the age old foundations you will be called repairers of the broken wall restorers of the street with dwelling if you keep your feet from breaking the sabbath and from doing as you please on the holy day if you call the sabbath a delight and the lord's holy day honorable and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words then you will find your joy in the lord and i will cause you to ride on the heights of the land and the feast on the inheritance of your father jacob the mouth of the lord has spoken thank you thank you so much uh, sitkenu so we saw here uh, the promises for our blessings it's interspersed with a uh, couple of other instructions which we've already dealt with right we we saw there are some instructions here about the the chosen fast um, where we said you know pointing a finger speaking wickedness we have to refrain from those things and then about uh, uh, keeping the sabbath keeping the sabbath and extending ourselves to the hungry soul uh, these are all so requirements for a chosen fast now what are the blessings let's come to that there are at least 18 statements of promise in this very passage of uh, uh, that tell us that god will bless us in these 18 different ways okay so that is motivation enough you know sometimes when um, we don't feel like fasting because it's hard obviously right it's really hard uh, but this can be an encouragement for us that when i fast you know uh, i am i am going and chosen fast when i bring the chosen fast to the lord one thing is that i'm communing with him i'm fellowshiping with him and that is strengthening me but in addition to that you know god has this list of promises this list of blessings that i can enjoy and uh, uh, that motivates us yes i will i will fast uh, because god is going to bless me for doing this so the first uh, promise here was 8 it says then your light shall break forth like the morning okay what is it what is the meaning of that see god is light uh when we say that he is light that includes the person of god you know he is a god of truth he is a god of love he is a god of righteousness you know he is uh, the god of justice all of this is light isn't it it is light uh, he is a god of blessings and prosperity so when this god shines on us his light shines on us or you know whoever he is that falls on our lives what can we expect you know we could look at our lives and say god there is darkness in so many areas of my life but god is promising and he's saying that i'm going to make my light shine on you which means that that darkness will be expelled or uh, we will overcome those those uh, you know challenging aspects of our life so god becomes you know that source of goodness who is shining upon us that source of blessing and prosperity who is shining upon our lives because we have chosen to uh, align ourselves yield ourselves to god through the uh, the discipline of fasting okay now light is also it's not just god magnifying himself in our lives that is god shining on us it is also uh, that god when he shines on us it's like you know light is illumination it is revelation it's it's knowledge right so we can also have uh, that in our lives we can have more uh, understanding of the things of god we can have clarity uh, about the things of god you know better visibility about our call our vision and what god has called us to do all of that so whatever you can associate with light shining upon the darkness we can say god you're going to shine into my life 
and that is more important for me and that is why i am fasting that is why i am seeking you for you to shine upon my life now the next thing we see here your healing shall break forth speedily uh, isaiah 58 and verse 8 so this in other words is just to say that you know for our wounds uh, we could be carrying physical challenges or physical sickness or we could be carrying uh, uh, emotional wounds you know, emotional scars now when we fast god gives a promise and he says see anyway he's a god who wants to heal us he has a covenant of healing with us he says i'm jehovah rafa the god who heals you now along with that he's saying let's make it quick we'll make it faster so that is the understanding that when we fast you know sometimes we maybe we want to experience that healing from god in our hearts we want to experience that healing uh, uh, you know in in our in our bodies and as we said it, it's not just for ourselves maybe you want to pray for a loved one who is physically sick or emotionally going through some challenges we can fast because here is god's promise and he says your healing shall spring forth speedily or come quickly so it makes it uh, faster hastens it or accelerates it Okay, so that is another blessing we can receive when we fast. Let's continue the same uh, passage, verse eight. It says, "Your righteousness shall go before you." So uh, it's a way of saying that uh, uh, that righteousness that we walk in, okay, that will make a way for us, or it will uh, pave a path for us, and God will cause that to happen. So. God uh, is a God who will uh, help that righteousness to lead us forward. Now we have a lot of other passages in Scripture that talk about the blessings of righteousness, where we know that you know righteousness will exalt a nation. So when we are walking right, it is going to bring honor on our lives. It is going to bring exaltation. It is going to uh, lift us up. okay but in addition to that you know god is saying that when we fast and pray that righteousness is going to make a way for us okay and god is going to lead us forward uh, now this righteousness is also uh, uh when when you read about the armor of god right we know that the breastplate of righteousness when we are walking in righteousness it is actually security as in uh it's like a it's like a weapon against the enemy it protects us Uh, see when when uh, we walk in righteousness when we walk uh, in the right way we we don't stumble uh, and i'm not getting the exact verse for that uh okay let me see there is one verse i think here and okay and there is proverbs 13:6 let me just see Ma'am, Proverbs thirteen. Ah, uh, six. Yeah, you can read it. Uh, Sit, can you? If you have it open. Righteousness guards the man of integrity, ah. but wickedness overthrows the sinner. Oh, okay, great, great. So that that is very clear uh, in explaining um, what I was just saying. That righteousness, it's a defense, and the breastplate of righteousness, right? It protects us against the enemy. So, in other words, righteousness becomes our defense also. okay and god is saying that when we fast and pray this righteousness uh, is going to make a way for us okay and maybe we've been standing uh, righteously and thinking god you know i don't see a way or i i don't i don't see this righteousness uh, bringing exaltation or anything positive in my life but just hold on as you fast god is going to bless that and he is going to uh, make a way through that righteousness now let's move on we also see in this passage that the glory of the lord shall be your rare god so in other words it's like saying god's glory will protect us we know that god's glory leads us isn't it uh, when when the israelites were led they were uh, uh, led by uh, the the pillar by night the cloud by day that is the manifestation of the glory of god in those ways okay uh, and they were led it was going before them but 
God is also saying that my glory will be so tremendous on you that not just ahead of you, but even behind you, even behind you, uh, my glory is going to take care of you. Now we can think about the time when the uh, children of God, they crossed the Red Sea and the Egyptians were following after them. But what happened when they tried to do the same thing that the Israelites did, they were not able to. So God protected the Israelites. What was protecting them even behind them? God's glory, right? And we are the blessed people of God who can have the glory before us and the glory behind us, right? And God will, uh, when we fast, when we align ourselves to God, what a beautiful thing. God says, my glory shall be your rare God. So as if it was not enough for the glory to be ahead of us, God's glory is divinely protecting us, even in areas that we can't see. Okay. In, in other words, you know, when, when we look behind, uh, behind us, if something happens behind me, if somebody attacks, I can't, I really wouldn't know. Okay. But God is saying, even in those situations, you know, I'm the God who protects you. So that is the understanding that we have when we say that God's glory will protect be our rare God. Let's just continue. Uh, verse 9 here, uh, it says that then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. So answered prayer. As it is, we've seen that God wants to answer our prayers. And when we pray in the will of God, we are aligned to answer prayers. But in addition to that, God is saying, I want to answer you quickly. You will cry and I will say, and he will say, here I am. So God wants to be available to us. God wants to respond uh, to us. And how can that happen, uh, you know, in a speedy manner? How can we walk in answered prayer in a consistent way? Fasting really uh, can help us do that. So it has a place for answers from God. And verse 10. Uh, your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as the noonday. Very similar to what we discussed earlier where God, God will shine on us, right? His light will shine on us. We're being told that our light okay, shall dawn in the darkness. Meaning, just think about your own life and if we feel that, you know, it is dark. God, look at Jesus. He said, I am the light of the world. And he also said, you are the light. You are salt. You are light. So we are here to shine God's light. God is going to make our lives bright. And it says your darkness shall be as the noonday. For, for us uh, who are, you know, uh, obedient uh, believers and who are uh, practicing this, this uh, discipline of uh, fasting, uh, even our most challenging situations are not that challenging. You know, to put it in a simple way, God is saying even your darkness shall be bright. Your darkness shall be bright. So, because I am with you, your challenges, you know, don't look at it as an isolated thing where I'm not there. If I am there in it, you don't have to worry. So that's what God is saying. Your darkness shall be as noonday. Just think, in other words, you can say that it talks of the help of God. God's help is so near that we can cry. He says, yeah, I'm waiting to say here I am. And then also your darkness shall be as noonday. So God's help is available in such a wonderful way for us. And this happens. God says, I will bless you if you uh, uh, partake of the chosen fast. Now let's move further. Verse 11, it says, Lord will guide you continually. God's guidance. You know, we will not lack God's guidance. Constantly, his prompting is there. Constantly, his leading is there, telling us, okay, do this, do that, go here, go that, you know, go there, uh, talk to this person, take these steps. So how can I have continual guidance? One of the additional ways, now, when you read this passage, don't like, we must not come to the conclusion that, yeah, okay, I'll only fast, I won't do anything else, then I'll have all of this. It's not like that. You know, we must not forget the wisdom of God's word in other uh, uh, passages. We know how God guides us. You know, he guides us by the prophetic word. He guides us by the very word of God. We are not discrediting those things, but we are adding to it. And we are saying, yes, along with all that, if I add fasting, a chosen fast, God is promising us and saying that I will bless you with continual 
guidance so you know that that is amazing we want to have continual guidance from god and satisfy your soul in drought in drought so again similar to our darkness being like the noon day we are told that um, even if we go through some dry seasons okay we can still experience the deep satisfaction of god or in other words you know we know jesus said i've come that you may have life and have it in abundance so how can we have abundant life when we are going through difficulty or lack or you know uh, maybe i don't know maybe some sickness in the family or strife or so many things right external pressures we can still have abundant life yes problems are there difficulties are there but in the midst of that we still have the zoe life of god we are living that zoe life abundant life of god and when we fast god is saying satisfy your soul in drought even in that situation god can satisfy us let's continue so strengthen your bones meaning uh, strengthen the bones means that strengthening the frame right the physical frame uh, of who we are uh, or you could also uh, extrapolate that and say strengthening the the rest of us soul spirit because we have promises for that in the rest of scripture so basically god is saying health wholeness healing that is your portion i will strengthen your bones so can i walk in divine health and healing yeah if we fast god is saying additional blessing is there for your healing and health as well so we can claim that then you shall be like a watered garden watered garden how does it look green you know fresh uh, uh, flourishing thriving fruitful so a fruitful life a thriving life i can have that if i am fasting okay so look at all the blessings so fasting is never uh, ayo i have to do it i don't want to do it i have to do it you know we must not have that attitude when you really study about fasting in scripture uh, it's it's so beautiful because it opens the way to commune uh, in, in an uninterrupted way with with god and in addition to that all these wonderful blessings that god is saying i'm going to give it to you and you can walk in these things so uh, fasting it's actually a joy for us to do he said he says you shall be like a watered garden meaning thriving and then uh, it says uh, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail abundance okay continual perennial we can use all these words when you see a spring of water it just gushes out keeps gushing out fresh water is coming out of it you know it just the, just looking at the spring you're refreshed uh, how much more you know touching that water and experiencing that water and that's how god is saying you know that that uh, fullness of life will keep flowing out of you and your waters will not fail meaning there's no end to that life that is flowing out of you because i am working it out in you right so that is a blessing which we can have if we fast then moving forward uh verse 12 uh here it says those from among you shall build the old waste places so that is like god saying i am blessing you for restoration okay uh, and we know that as god's people we have an assignment of bringing god's restoration in people's lives maybe somebody has come a friend of ours and they are sharing hey all this has happened in my life uh, you know the past and the shame of it and i don't know what to do but god can use me as a, an instrument of his restoration in the life of such a person and maybe i speak words of encouragement i pray for the person god releases a prophetic word through my life which goes and you know builds that power of the prophetic word it really uh, makes a turn around for that person now maybe god wants to use us to restore a community of people or a family uh, you know recently one of our uh, one of the students uh, in another batch she was she had just shared with me that you know she's ministering to a family they had a couple of deaths and so they are devastated uh and she said ma'am they have called me to pray should i go or should i ask like pastor to go uh, some other pastor to go she's in another city so i said no if uh, they have called you it's okay you can go and pray not a problem so she went she prayed she ministered to them and then she messaged me and told me 
you know i never thought i if i go and i pray uh, it will be such a blessing those people are encouraged you know they now they have hope for the future uh, so they thanked me and all so i you know that is what this means you shall build the old waste places a channel of god's restoration maybe in the life of that family or think about our nation you know we could look at our society we can look at uh, all the things around us you know we talk about the seven mountains right we can look at the realm of education and think oh it's uh, it's, it's th there are ruins there there needs some we need some restoration you know, god can help us be that channel of restoration in anything that has been wasted or destroyed but uh, according to god's purpose you know that needs to be refreshed and strengthened god can use us in those areas so when we fast and pray through our lives god can touch marriages god can touch families god can touch business you know, god can touch finances and bring about restoration okay verse 12 you shall raise up the foundations of many generations okay again it is like uh, uh, you know things that were shaken up things that were shaken up maybe old foundations some of the old things were shaken up but we can strengthen them once again okay and how how do we strengthen them really strong okay for many generations so we strengthen these things uh, and uh, you know god can use us to strengthen the old foundations this again you know it's very similar to what i talked about restoration uh, uh, but over here it's like old foundations is uh, just take for example a godly life and we want that foundation to be strong so that our children can can learn from us that generations to come will have that as a legacy god will use us to strengthen those foundations and moving forward you know it says you shall be a repairer uh, you shall be a repairer of the breach so this means if there is any uh, crack or loophole or uh, things that are broken down god uses us as a repairer god helps us and when we repair what happens you know when you repair a wall there is protection once again there is strength there is uh, there is you know god's blessing uh, within within that that uh, that boundary so god can use us to repair in line with in line with what we've been saying restoration people's lives you know we can we can uh, do that and actually here repairer of the breach breach also means like a division okay so uh, we can bring about that patching up and that unity and god can do that through us okay when we fast so he has already given us that promise then restorer of streets to dwell in wow isn't that beautiful it's a word of healing on our land the streets if they were already okay why would they need restoration but god is saying i will make you a restorer of the streets so that people can live there happily with an abundant life so once again you know bringing healing upon our land that is possible there's so much to do with healing of the land isn't it a restoration of the land when we are engaging in fasting then moving forward uh and this is beautiful verse 14 it says you shall delight yourself in the lord you know above everything god i want to see this happen i want to see that happen above everything our fellowship with god is what is our delight isn't it so god is saying when we fast you know we we love god we want more of god but that hunger increases that delight increases where you can't have enough of it you want more and you can't be satisfied uh, with whatever you get how how can how can that happen to an individual you know, when god says i will bless you if you fast i will give you that kind of a hunger for me so you know it's a beautiful promise that we can have more of god when we fast we can enjoy more of god and freely we can we can do that then uh, again verse 14 it says i will cause you to ride on the high hills of the earth that's like saying you know the life of an overcomer the life of one who is soaring victorious 
uh, and God can give us that blessing if we fast. Uh, and you know, you could also look at it as riding on the high hills, meaning having an honorable life. Only God can do that. Only God puts honor on our lives. So uh, when we fast, God says, I will do this for you. Then uh, moving forward here, the 18th blessing, feed, and feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father. So the heritage of uh, Jacob, your father is, you know, there were blessings upon the life of Jacob. Uh, and in Obadiah, we said that they will possess their possessions. Remember, we said that those who go after God, uh, they go hard after God, they will possess their possessions. And uh, the, 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 the descendants of Jacob, okay, it says, so Jacob had blessings upon his life. And now God is saying, those blessings, you know, I will give you, you will have the heritage of Jacob, your father. So God is pouring and showering all those blessings upon us. Uh, so in this manner, you know, we see that there is so much that we have, we are, we stand to gain out of fasting. Uh, whereas fasting can be seen only as, oh, it's too hard. It's too difficult. It's too painful. But Look at the other side. You know, we stand to gain so much. So, like for me, if I think of fasting, I feel like, wow, why, why should we not do it if it's going to strengthen our relationship with God and bring all these blessings on us? Okay, so yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit about fasting. In uh, our APC resources on the website, you can also go and look for a sermon series uh, by the title, The Chosen Fast. Okay? And I think it's a four-part series. It covers whatever I have shared with you, but you know, you could just go and listen to it over and over again if you would like as well. Uh, it'll just bless you and strengthen you to uh, move in this discipline and gain the most out of it okay uh, so uh, yeah and oh yeah I, I told you that i would uh, share a little bit so uh, for me i think uh, i learned uh, that you know regular fasting uh, is is something that we can incorporate into our lives and i also read about you know the apparently the methodists they had a rule anyone who came as a minister uh, for the Methodists, you know, they had this rule that uh, every Wednesday and Friday, some two days, you know, the person needs to fast till 3 p.m. or something. Only then they can be part of the ministry uh, work. Uh, so, you know, I, I read all these things earlier and I thought, hey, is it possible to have days of the week that you can assign to uh, fasting? Uh, but then, you know, when, when I read it, uh, I kind of started trying to practice it. So it took me a couple of years actually to get it into my schedule. Uh, and uh, in general, you know, normally it's been a part of my schedule. In fact, I used to do uh, two days uh, a week, uh, not the entire day, but maybe, you know, uh, skip your breakfast, lunch and all that, maybe the evening meal have it. So I used to do that for a very long period of time. And then eventually it became one day of the week. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I mean, to be honest to you, actually in this season of my life, the last um, uh, some months, I haven't, I haven't done it. Uh, but that is my normal, that is my normal. And I do intend to get back to it, you know, a weekly, weekly fast. So in general, you know, I, I, I prefer this than what I told you earlier. Earlier, before only ministry, I used to take it up and fast before I go and minister. Uh, but then I realized, you know, if fasting is a normal part of my life, then um, that will strengthen me even more. And I've seen this example in our, like I've seen pastor talk about regular fasting so i think for years of his life every friday or something the whole day he fasts um, and uh, also in our bible college we have this uh, when you all come here for whenever the in-person restarts we have friday as a fasting day where everyone uh, you know keeps that fast again you know people it's not a forced thing. Uh, it's your consent. You need to be willing to do it. And uh, usually that fasting time uh, is closed up with a time of intercession, worship, prayer. Uh, and it is, you know, quite powerful. So just some examples. And yes, also uh, in my life, I think I have had some extended 
periods of fasting as well. And uh, one particular uh, fast that uh, I always go back to, uh, it was one of the most uplifting and refreshing times of my life because uh, I feel like in that season, when I when I did that fast, uh, slightly prolonged fast, uh, so much changed. I had prayed for a couple of things, uh, particularly... Um, Yes, for spiritual matters and also, uh, you know, for uh, some of the natural things and also my health. And uh, I, I, got, I really got a major breakthrough in my health after that one particular prolonged fast. Uh, so I know that fasting is, is uh, amazing, you know, given like if, if I didn't have to uh, uh, teach and have all these tasks through the day, I would perpetually want to fast all the time. So, yeah, just a little bit about the uh, what I have learned personally from fasting. Uh, but uh, please go ahead. Anything you want to share or ask or discuss, we can do that. Okay, just one, one point I'll add here. See, fasting doesn't mean uh, destroying our health. Okay, always remember that because uh, the same Bible also says that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So I don't have the right to, uh, you know, put myself in a place uh, where I am fasting and uh, I know that it's having, you know, negative um, impact on my health. Uh, but I need to be aware, right, and make a wise decision. So uh, it's not this or that. We can be healthy and we can fast. So, you know, try to do it that way. And I, I am really a true believer of that. Yeah, we, we can fast. We can also fast for extended periods of time. But uh, take care of your health. You know, take care of your health. Fast the right way. There are some practical ways where when we fast, uh, it is good to, um, uh, you know, decide how long you're going to fast, how, what kind of fast you want to have, whether you just want to uh, skip, you know, a meal or two, or whether you want to uh, do a Daniel fast, then it makes it easy. You don't have to focus on it. You can fast and keep, you know, spending time with God. Uh, and then, you know, whether you, you just want to drink water or uh, uh, all that. And then you could also, uh, you know, take care of your health. Sometimes people end up drinking a lot of tea, coffee, and all that when they're not eating. And that causes a lot of, you know, uh, damage actually to, to us rather than physically. And while they're fasting, yes, the spiritual benefits are there. But I'm just saying, like, take care of your health. If you, you are fasting for prolonged periods of time, then you need to know how to get started and how to close it off so that you can get the maximum benefits, not just spiritually, but also for your health sake. So uh, fasting doesn't mean, <laughs> uh, you know, destroying our health. So just a point there for us. Okay. Yes. Yes, Sarah. Yeah, yeah, it's Divya. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, uh, Pastor, uh, my question is regarding. Um, uh, we talked about the chosen fast, and it yeah. it was uh, about you know the attitudes we need to have and all that, mm -hmm. which pleases mm -hmm. God. Uh, so suppose uh, you know we are planning to uh, take a fast. How do we? Uh, you might have covered on this, but I was just trying to understand how do we decide like what kind of fasting to take, whether it should be a prolonged fasting or a mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind of incorporating into the week or anything mm -hmm. of that sort. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, Divya, sure. Thank you. So it's similar to prayer, what we said uh, about scheduling some time, uh, which is regular, and then you have your um, extended periods whenever you can make time for it. Uh, so it can be something like, you know, as I told you, if we can incorporate fasting into every week of our lives, that would be good. You know, I, 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 I really believe in that. So uh, every week, if you can just have a day or, or two, whatever you know, works for you, uh, you schedule it. Now, addition, in addition to that, uh, if you have the, the uh, mm, you know, freedom in your schedule. You can also schedule maybe weekends, weekends uh, in in a month or 
like in two months you pick a weekend and then you kind of uh, you know schedule it so these smaller fasts you can schedule divya and that will be helpful you don't really have to say okay when i'm led by god and all but prolonged fasts i think it is it's better to have an impression uh, in your heart where you feel like okay if i'm going to fast 21 days then um, i i need to really be impressed by the holy spirit to take up something like that now i do know of people who every year they have time set aside you know every january i i fast 21 days but again you know they have made that commitment to god so as led by god so prolonged fasts uh, something which is more than 7 days or so i think it's better to kind of pray and uh, hear from god and then take it up but i think anything below you know things like uh, twice a week or over a weekend three days up to uh, five days seven days that you can always schedule okay okay pastor yeah yeah, uh, yeah. i i just uh, wanted to share uh, mm. one thing regarding this uh, 21 days like it's uh, kind of a testimony like i had been doing it with one of my friends Uh, so it is it was basically for her family because through the covid time uh, they uh, the husband lost the job and it was a very pathetic situation but uh, miraculously you know after these 21 days he is uh, getting a job they are being restored you know to to their uh, even blessed even more than the initial status so yeah i just wanted to you know testify to that uh, yeah thank you wow amazing amazing praise god thank you sir uh, divya for for sharing that yeah yeah uh, zeli toli uh, do you have anything to share about fasting and prayer i know that there's a lot of fasting and prayer that goes on in your church okay not sure zeli is able to hear yeah currently we are fasting for the upcoming days yeah i know and like uh, the holy spirit is really uh, like revealing things to us and we are expecting great things uh that the holy spirit will manifest so yeah we are looking forward and also like uh the last session like we had on the holy spirit in that time like i was just reminded of the song way maker and uh you know like uh, the song it really blessed my heart and i was just praying asking the lord you know like what does it mean and the lord reminded me like you know uh he is a promise keeper whatever you all are praying you know it will come into flourishing you know that he will work in signs wonders and miracles and we are expecting great things from the lord yeah so do keep us in prayer so yeah thank you yeah yeah thank you thank you uh, zeli so uh, yes uh, class that's a little bit about fasting uh, i i know we've gone over time but again are there any more questions because this would be our last session on fasting okay so uh, if you do uh think of something and you need clarification you can always post it on the um the stream page on uh, the google classroom and let's take it up because there's so much you know the about fasting out there and uh, uh, uh and yes it, those of us who have never tried it i just want to encourage you maybe in a small way and uh, don't feel pressured to do it you can pray and you can do it whichever way other you skip a meal or you you uh, do a daniel fast but gradually right gradually you just make it a part of your everyday life and uh, we just read so many wonderful blessings that we can actually receive from god when we do the chosen fast okay so all right let's uh, close off class uh, and i would I'd like to request somebody to please pray as we wrap it up Can I pray? Yes, yes, Divya. 
Thank you, Father. Thank you uh, for helping us, Father Lord, to attend in another session, Father Lord, uh, where we uh, get a deeper understanding, Father, of your ways, Father, of how you want us to live our lives, how you want us to get closer with you, Father Lord. We thank you and praise you, Father, for Pastor Nancy, uh, for um, all the uh, principles, Father, of, uh, from the Bible that uh, she has uh, taught us, Father Lord. Uh, thank you, Lord, for her uh, experiences, her testimony testimonies lord thank you father for her life you bless her immensely father and even moving forward father lord all that you have planned and prepared for her lord may you bring it to pass father in your own beautiful time father i pray for for each and every student father lord bless them father and uh, father help us lord um, you know all our needs father all our spoken unspoken needs father even before we come to you lord you know it in advance father but uh, as we pray Pray to you, Father Lord. You reveal your will to us, Father, as we, uh, Father Lord, uh, even, uh, uh, Lord, as we learn today, Lord, about fasting. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us this provision, Father Lord. You help us, Father, that we um, make use of all these provisions that you've given us, Father. Thank you, Lord, that uh, you have written in your word all the benefits, Father Lord, all the blessings, Father, when we make use of uh, uh, the provision of fasting, Father Lord. I pray that you quicken our hearts, Father, that that we be able to decide, Father Lord, um, how to, uh, Father, uh, in which all ways, Father, whether it is through prayer, whether it is through the uh, study of your word, whether it is through fasting, Lord, uh, whichever way, Father, you want us to, uh, Father, have a closer relationship with you, Lord, to know you more, Father, because your word says knowing you is eternal life. Yes, Father, you help us, Father, that we may be able to know you, Father, in a a personal way that wherever we are, Lord, all the places that you have uh, put us, Father, it is for a reason and a purpose, Father, Lord, that we may be able to represent you well. All these things we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Sivya. And thank you, everyone. God bless you. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow. We have a class tomorrow as well. But uh, we'll move to the next topic. So, yeah, see you tomorrow. God bless. Bye.